Do you wake up with your hair like this? Welcome to Tress Talk with Gertie, your weekly dose of hair, wellness, and faith. For this week's episode, we are going to go over natural hair styling, especially if you have very thick, curly hair. Sassy here has hair for about 10 people, and so it's important if you have this hair as well to take the time out to be able to detangle, style, and make sure that you're not ripping your hair out in the process. I'm gonna go over some techniques that will set you up for success as you look to style your hair at home. Take a look. One of the best tools to help with your detangling, very thick, coarse, natural hair, is to add a little bit of moisture to it. And so that's what I'm doing by wetting the hair. I'm making sure the water gets all through the hair can squeeze a little bit out. The hair does not have to be dripping wet, but you want to make sure that you have an ample amount of water throughout the hair. As you can see from where we started, she already has some stretch and definition. So when you're taking the time out to style and try different styles with your natural hair, there's some key tools that you wanna have in your arsenal that will set you up for success. First, we have our spray bottle. I particularly like these spray bottles because it gives a nice mist to cover more surface area as you spray it. The way it sprays, it spreads out so you're not having one concentrated target of water, but rather it gives a nice overall mist to cover the hair. Next, you want to invest in a great detangling brush, one that is specifically designed for natural curly hair. You'll see that the bristles, the rows of bristles have separation and you have some give so that while detangling the hair, you're not pulling or popping the hair. This is one of my favorite from Felicia Underwood. Next, you want your classic detangling comb. This is one of my favorite by the Crest Comb Company. With natural hair, one of your number one pieces of um, tools that you will have are your clips. You have your larger, wider butterfly clips. You have smaller butterfly clips and you also have these clips called the claw. Lastly, a good tail comb for being able to have more precise detangling and sectioning. You use the tail of the comb for your parting and you use um, the teeth side of the comb to have more defined detangling as you're styling. And lastly, the products that you choose to use. You're gonna use a combination of creams and liquids to work in conjunction with the water that's, that's the base of your styling. Water is your friend and not, you don't wanna run away from using water. All right, we're gonna get right into it. I'm going to part her hair now and go over two techniques that you can do, a two strand twist and or a cornrow, which will give you different textured results. With your two strand twist, you're going to get like a rope-like um, end result. And with your cornrow, it's going to give you more of a zigzag end result. With the cornrow, you can find that the hair will give you more volume. 
Whereas with the two strand twist, by virtue of how the hair is curled, they tend to fall into each other. So if you're looking for more volume, I do recommend doing a cornrow braid set. If you're looking to have a lot of definition and you're okay with the hair falling into each other, which also looks very beautiful, you can opt for a two strand twist set. Depending on the width or the volume of your set is how you'll determine how wide or how thin you do your partings. For this type of look, I do recommend doing medium to large as opposed to doing very small sections because sometimes the smaller the section, the more frizzy the end result of the style looks. One of your key in having control is actually sectioning off, working in smaller sections that are easier for you to manage. So now her hair is amply wet. I'm going to detangle. You always start at your ends and work your way up. I'm using the comb as opposed to the brush only because this is the smallest section of hair. Okay, so now that she's detangled, the hair is still pretty moist. I'm going to use a cream leave-in conditioner. Run it through my hands. and make sure I'm getting through to the hair from the root all the way through to the ends. I'm applying some pressure. I'm not ripping her hair out of her head. One of the keys is making sure that you're properly distributing the product through the hair. So now she has all of her leave-in. I'm using a curl enhancing mousse. About two and a half pumps. Once again, through my hand. And I'm making sure that I'm catching it from her roots all the way through to her ends. Next, you're gonna use your fingers to be able to part through and section out the hair. So this is a two strand twist. And as it says, I'm going to have two sections or two, yeah, two sections of her hair that's going to be the strand to start. I always recommend starting out the beginning and doing a, a few, going around a few revolutions before continuing just to give nice definition, especially at the hairline. So as you go along, you're going to take another piece of hair with what you already twisted, and you're gonna follow along the path that you parted. Sometimes you might find that as you're twisting, the ends might get tangled. So you'll have your detangling comb within arm's reach so that you can detangle as you go along. Make sure you get all the way through to the end and then you use your fingers to seal that end and you wrap it around your finger. Depending on how you want your end result to be, you can allow your ends to hang or you can do a simple tuck or you can do a tighter knot. Use a pin to secure it. Okay. So next, we're going to do a braid for a braid set. 
And if you know that you're gonna, you're doing the set and you're gonna wear it out, don't be so hard on yourself to make sure you have straight lines or straight parts. If you're going to do it in a way that you can wear it as a style prior to wearing it out, that's one thing. But if you're just setting your hair, it's okay if your parts are not completely straight. So you also wanna be gentle with your hair. As you're parting it, you don't want to rip, pop, or yank the hair. You're putting, you're using the tail and you're separating, and, but you're separating in a way where you're allowing the hair to not pull or snag and pop as you're doing it. If you find that you have um, little fairy knots, then you take the time out to just detangle that. One thing to remember with natural hair is that you do want to allow yourself ample time to properly care for your hair while you're styling it. Especially if you're new to styling your natural hair, you want to take the time out to not only learn your hair, but see what works with regard to your techniques, your combing, and your styling. So once the part is done, you section away the remainder of the hair. And so for this section, I'm just gonna mist it lightly. Get it wet again. I still have to detangle the subsection, so I'm gonna go ahead and just add the leave-in conditioner and I'll detangle it at the same time. Once again, you run it through your hands and then you apply it and you ensure that you're applying it roots to tips. Applying some pressure, using your fingers to evenly distribute it. But you still want to have a certain level of care with the hair. Even though her hair is very thick and she has a lot of hair, you still do not want to rough it up. You don't want to do this with your hair. You use your fingers, you use some pressure, you work it through. Then you use your detangling comb to detangle. Take smaller subsections and detangle from the ends to the roots. Okay, so once she's detangled, we're gonna go in and you can do some pumps of your enhancing mousse. Sometimes you can use a twist cream. I like to use, um, sometimes I like to use the mousses because it allows the hair to dry quicker. Sometimes the creams, it takes a while for the hair to dry. So it's a matter of your preference. And the creams are also good for if you find that your hair can feel a little bit drying, then I do recommend using a twist cream. So in the two strand twist, we did what? We used two strands. With the cornrow, it's gonna be three strands. So I part out the beginning and I section it into three like so. As you're going along, you're going to use your finger to part and capture some more hair. Part and capture. Try to use your fingers to detangle all the way through to minimize the hair tangling as you're braiding. Every section. I'm running my hand through to detangle as we go along. It's okay if your hair tangles. That's a natural part of the fact that your hair is curled. So because your hair is curled, it's going to always fight to go back to curling around itself.
Once again, when you get to the free end where you're braiding the rest of the length of the hair that's not on the scalp, you can take your detangling comb out to make sure you fully detangle through as you're finishing off your braid. The braid that comes out, you see how there's a braid sitting on her scalp? This is called a cornrow. If I were to invert the braid, where it's going into the scalp and it's not on top of the, the head, that's a French braid. Once again, making sure you smooth it out at the end and you do a little curl around your fingers to seal it. You can do the knot or you can do the same thing that I mentioned with your two strand twist. You can loop it or do a knot. So this one is the two strand twist. And this one is the cornrow. Okay, so for our next two techniques, I'm going to go over your Bantu knots, also known as China bumps. I'm going to moisturize with her water. Make sure that water gets through roots to ends. Leave in conditioner. Roots to ends. Detangle. And I'm gonna show two types of China bumps you can do. So the first one is the quickest and the easiest. I'm applying my foam. Or you can do your cream. Making sure it gets all the way in there. And I'm literally taking that section Twisting the entire section of hair. Great tension, not ripping the hair out of the scalp. Twisting, twisting, twisting. And then wrapping the hair, holding with one hand and wrapping it around itself. As you, for every revolution, you're going to go at the base of the hair, underneath what you already just did. You wrap it, you tuck that hair underneath, and you secure it with your bobby pin. Now open it up, and you're gonna put it at the base, right through to the other side. So that's your first type of China bump. The next one, if you're in the mood to get fancy, you take it and you do a two strand twist at first. So you separate it into two sections and starting from your base, you're gonna Twist the hair. Twist it all the way to the end and you'll follow the same revolution technique that you did with the original And once again, you secure it with a pin. You go through that last one that you went around to make sure you secure the end. 
and those are your two china bumps. You're going to get looser definition with the original one where you twist it. So you'll, you still have great texture. It'll still be a beautiful end result. For the second china bump that you do with the two strand twist, you're gonna get more definition because the two strands are giving you definition. And then when you're doing the, when you're wrapping it around, it's going to give you more fullness. The point of doing the china bumps when you wear it out is that you're gonna get a tighter um, end result. So it's gonna look more of like an afro. With the two strands, you're gonna get more definition within that afro, whereas with the just the one around, you're going to get an overall voluminous afro. Okay, so for our final two techniques, I'm going to part off a little section. Spray some water. Oftentimes, people want to be product heavy, but I recommend you are water heavy and you use your products, not sparingly, but you start small and add as you go along if necessary. Oftentimes, people are putting way too much product and so that's how you have flaking or that's how sometimes the hair is just weighed down and sometimes you experience having that white haze because it's just too much product. Also, with Styling Natural Hair, I prefer to do what's called layering. And that's, as you can see, each step I'm adding something else. So I'll do the water, then you're leaving, then whatever the styling agent is. Another technique is called cocktailing, where you can have them all pre-mix together and then apply it as, at once. If this section feels too, like it's too big for you, you can just separate it and pick a smaller subsection. A healthy head of hair is going to shed 75 to 150 strands daily. So if you find that you're not detangling as much or you feel that you're losing so much hair and you're nervous about that, don't be unless it's significantly more than that. So the next two techniques, I wanna go over the difference between a technique called shingling and finger coil. Shingling is the method that you use to ensure that you're, you're getting the product through to every strand of the hair to enhance the curl, the hair's natural curl pattern. So with shingling, you're taking small subsections and you're literally using your fingers to get the product through and making sure that the hair receives that product so that when it dries, you're getting all the definition on how your hair naturally curls. You're not doing any manipulation to create a curl. That's what shingling is. You see Stasi's beautiful curl pattern and we allow it to dry that way. Bear in mind, this is a tedious process. It's time consuming, but to get the best result is taking small, small sections and doing this for every hair strand. After you do this and you let it set to dry, try not to manipulate with it or mess with it until it completely dries and it sets as is. After that, you can go manipulate it, switch your parts, no parts, whatever it is that you wanna do, but while it's in this state of setting, you wanna leave it be. So our last technique I'm gonna go over are your finger coils. And I'm gonna do it right next to the shingling so you can see the difference. With the shingling and with the finger coils, I do recommend, in addition to your leave-in conditioner and enhance, curl enhancing mousse or twist cream, that you can add a little bit of gel for some extra hold. You detangle, 
end to root. So with your finger coil, it's just that. You make sure you have an ample amount of product, root to end. You take a subsection and you're literally coiling that hair section around your fingers, hence finger coiling. You want to start at the root and while you're having the hair revolve around your finger, you're twisting it. So whereas you're shingling, you're allowing the hair to do its natural coil, with the finger coil, you're manipulating the hair to create a coil. You do a little twist at the end to seal it. Okay, now we can see the difference between your shingling and your finger coils. Okay, so there we have it. You've just been equipped with about four to five different techniques that you can use to give you beautiful end results, full of texture, full of definition, and full of your natural curls. I'll start over here with our shingling, as I said before, is the, um, one of the most tedious processes. However, you'll be able to get nice definition on how your hair naturally curls. With the finger coils, you are manipulating curls into the hair. You're um, able to get great definition. Once it dries, you can separate it for even more volume and fullness. The same thing with the shingles. You can take them out and separate them once they dry. In particular, with all of these, you wanna make sure that you allow the hair ample time to dry, whether you use a, a hooded dryer, a bonnet dryer, or you let it air dry overnight. With your, your knots, with your braid set or your twist out, after you're able to set the hair, then you can go into the detail work of smoothing out your hairline and catching the, the shorter hair. You don't want to force pulling shorter pieces of hair into the twist or the braid or the knots. That's how, that's what leads to breakage. That's what leads to you losing the hair because when the hair is wet, it's weaker and the hair is stretched out while it's wet. So if there's any hair that's short, I recommend waiting till after you do your set to be able to smooth it out with either a smoothing cream or a gel. And there we have it. Different techniques for your textured hair. Embrace your curl, work with it, not against it, and be patient with yourself as you go through the process. Until next time, thank you for watching Tress Talk with Gertie, your weekly dose of hair, wellness, and faith. See you next week.